Okay, it's 10 o'clock, let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining. This is uh, Windows 7 Server 2008 end of life. Yes, it's finally in, uh, has came and gone at this point. So a little bit about me, my name is Will Nobles. I'm the founder and CEO of Vector Choice. Uh, I am not a traditional IT guy. I actually came from a farming background in Eastern North Carolina, but I hold two degrees in technology. I, locate, I relocated in Atlanta in 2002. We currently have four locations in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Eastern North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, and Washington, DC. I launched uh, Vector in 2008, and I've got over 22 years of experience in IT. So the agenda for today is, what does end of life for EOL mean for you? Also dates, talk about no more security updates, what's at stake for you? And then also, what does a machine really cost you when it's over four years old? And what are your options? What, what is Vector Choice's stance on this and the types of support options you have after uh, January? And then a Q&A uh, question at the end. <clears throat> okay, so what does end of life mean? That does not mean it's Y2K, does not mean it's the end of the world. It means just what it, it means that a, Microsoft is sunsetting one of their products, okay? It, Microsoft is not the only one that does this. Everybody does it, Cisco, Apple. So don't, don't blame Microsoft. Um, it does happen quite a bit with them, but uh, it's just sunsetting that operating system or that hardware. So it, but it does not mean that the world comes to the end like you were scared in Y2K and, and that you, you don't have any other choices. <clears throat> So let's talk about uh, Windows 7 and Server 2008 timeline. Now you'll be surprised that Server, you know, Server 2008 came out in mainstream support, and uh, uh, Windows 7 came out in mainstream support in 2008. Um, and so, and let me, let's talk a little bit about mainstream support and extended support. Mainstream support means that Microsoft is expiring or sunsetting. Um, they're, when they uh, bring an operating system, that is the timeline they give the life shelf of that product. But what they always do is that they do extended support because it does happen very, very quickly. And, and extended support, what, you, what you're getting with that, you're still getting the security patches and uh, everything, but you're stopped getting uh, added features that they would add on to Windows 10 or Server 2008 uh, or any other product. Uh, as you see, Windows 10 as well, uh, it, it, will, it has a sunset date of 2021 and has the extended support date of 2025. So yes, Windows 10 will also come to an end at one point in time as well. Uh, these are tentative dates uh, with Microsoft right now, um, but that's what they've got published and everything. So we've, we've enjoyed Windows 7 for a long time, but like anything, it's time to move on, time to upgrade. Same thing with Server 2008, great operating system but you will be surprised that there's Server 2008, Server 2012, Server 2016, and 19 now. So that's how far you're behind. If you're still running Server 2008, you're several server operating systems behind. Versus like the desktop, you're really only one version behind if you're running Windows 7. <clears throat> okay, so what you get with both, or what you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get any more security updates. So January 14th, 2020 is the deadline. That means that extended support ends and you will no longer be patched from a security standpoint. You're no longer gonna be secure. Um, so hackers, you're gonna be more vulnerable to hackers. That's why you're gonna to want to upgrade uh, to uh, Windows 10 and uh, a later version of server uh, operating system as well. So remember, January 14th, 2020, that is not Vector's date, uh, that is, uh, uh, Microsoft's date. Also, something else uh, to note, I would not be talking about pricing on this call. Um, I have a few other um, uh, individuals that are cohorts of mine that owns a different uh, managed services companies across the country. They've invited their clients on as well uh, to hear this. So I won't be talking about uh, individual prices. Please reach out to them directly if you're working with them. If you're my client or my prospect, please give me a call and we can talk about pricing and, and what uh, other options you have um, beyond this webinar. So no more support for Microsoft. So Microsoft is not going to support um, Windows 7 and Server 2008 any longer. So if you have any issues with that, yes, your IT uh, person or your IT company can handle that, 
but at the same time, you definitely want to go ahead and move on from those two operating systems. But on the plus side, it gives you a vision and to upgrade to more opportunities for better security, improved performance, and greater innovation. Windows 10 is an awesome operating system. Uh, it does change a little bit, but you can make it look and feel like Windows 7. But there's a lot of security features that come with Windows 10 um, by default that you did not get with Windows 7 as well as there's tons of more features in server 2016 and server 2019 uh, that comes with that as well on the server side. So what's at stake? What's at stake if you stay? So the compatibility issues. Uh, applications are going to outgrow you when if you're staying on Windows 7 or server 2008. You're gonna have applications that are gonna say, uh, a lot of your third party vendors is gonna say, I'm not gonna support Windows 7 or Server 2008 anymore for a variety of reasons. One, most likely just like we do, we don't support it because if we cannot have support of the ma manufacturer or the vendor that creates the product, there's not much we can do for you. And it, and it sort of um, ties our hands. So that's why third party vendors are doing that. And then also hardware, you're gonna find some hardware or drivers that are not gonna be compatible with Windows 7 anymore as time goes by. So that's some of the things you want to look at. Again, back to security updates, and I keep beating that. Security updates are very important because you have a vulnerability. If you have a hole in that operating system and a hacker can get in, you're just making yourself vulnerable. So you're just asking for to get hacked. Um, I know everybody says, well, anything can be hacked. Yes, but you don't want to have a clear picture out there to, to get hacked from that standpoint. Uh, reduction uh, a, a, a attack surface. That's more a technical term. I'm not going to go too far into that, but definitely use uh, uh, look into that as well. And compliancy. If you're HIPAA, ITAR, GDPR, uh, PCI, SOX compliant, you will not pass a compliance test if you're still running Windows 7 Server 2008. So if you take credit cards, you have to be PCI compliant you definitely need to make sure those machines are out of your environment or PCI will fail you on a PCI test. Uh, uh, ITAR, definitely uh, uh, SOX and HIPAA as well. There is uh, a few got you's with that, but you, you definitely want to go ahead and upgrade uh, to stay in compliance. <clears throat> okay, devices over four years old. So what, we, what I've done is some studies and a device, a server or a computer that is over four years old, you're three and a half times likely to need repairs. You're gonna, and just sort of statistics, right? 98 hours loss of productivity of that person. So if that person is working on an older machine, four plus years old, they are losing about 98 hours of the life of that computer of time that they can be productive for you if you're a business owner on this call. So, Older machines, you, you want to extend the life of the machine, I understand. You want to be able to write it off, I understand. But at the same time, I encourage you not to extend it past four years because your employees, it's gonna be slower for the employees, you're gonna have more issues, you're gonna be un, more unhappy with your IT company and where they can't control things. And the employees can't move more, uh, no more faster than the computer can move. So definitely look at make, take that into consideration. 93% of small businesses think it's easier just to go buy a new device, okay? So that, that is a very important number, how many small businesses think, you know, I'm just gonna buy a new device, it's easier, I, keep, I can keep it up, as well as my employee can get um, the job done a lot faster. And sort of the total cost of ownership of hours lost, downtime, repairs on that machine, comes out about 23.97 um, for a machine that's older than four years. Okay, what are your options? Yes, you could do absolutely nothing. You can take this webinar and say, no, nope, Will, I am not going to do anything about it. That is the worst idea, but I wanted to put that up there as an option because that is truly an option for you to do nothing, stay your status quo and, and, and be vulnerable, okay? The second thing, you can upgrade the operating system. Now, there's some things that we talk about, uh, you know, how old the machine is, should I upgrade the operating system uh, and keep the hardware or should I just replace the hardware? 
So what we put a, a, a note on is June 2017, it, if the machine was purchased older than June 2017, we're just saying, let's replace the hardware in the operating system. If it was purchased June 2017 or current, uh, we, we say, okay, yeah, let's just go ahead and upgrade the operating system to Windows 10. Uh, the hardware is going to be completely fine. Let's do that. Obviously, you got upgrading the hardware, which is a better idea because the hardware comes with better technology built in, faster memory, faster processors. Um, you can get uh, solid state hard drives that's going to run a lot faster for you. Or obviously, you can go to the cloud. Now, you're thinking, how do I take my computer to the cloud? Well, there, one, let's talk about servers. Easy to take a cloud to the, uh, uh, easy to take a server to the cloud being a virtual server and a data center and so forth. Don't let the cloud scare you. The cloud is just another data center that is not in your office, but is a true uh, secure data center. But you also have options that do what's called VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, getting rid of the computers altogether, do thin clients with a virtual desktop. Now that gets really deep into a lot of options when you're talking about VDI and there's some limitations to that, but that is an option for you as well. Okay, the types of support. Now, I didn't, I hate sharing this screen, um, this one slide, and the reason for it is because people will jump on this and say, I don't have to do anything until 2023. Yes and no, okay? And so I wanna break this down and I wanna be clear. Vector and most IT companies do not recommend this, but this is an option, and usually it's an option for large, large companies that need to extend their life of their machines a little bit longer because they're having to replace thousands of machines, okay? But Server 2008, there's really no option for you as a small business uh, for Server 2008. Only if you're on uh, software assurance under an enterprise agreement for Server 2008, you can get extended security um, updates until 2023, okay? They're, they have not published pricing for that yet, but there, there is an option for you to do that. Again, if you're a medium small business, I would not recommend doing that. Windows 7 extended security updates until 2023. This is the one I hate the most, okay? So December 1st, they're going to release the ability for you to come to a Microsoft partner like Vector or your, um, your MSP and a purchase extended support for one year, two year, and three year, okay? on Windows 7. Now, all you're going to get is security updates. You're not going to get anything else, no support from Microsoft, no other issues that the Windows 7 could uh, happen. All you're getting is security updates. Again, the pricing, it is not firm, but it is going to be, my understanding, it's going to be $50 per machine for the first year, $100 the second year and $150 the third year. And all of that is not, that's a one-time cost per machine. So remember that. Uh, I still don't recommend this. If you have a fleet of two, 3,000 computers, yes, uh, it makes sense to extend it maybe one year. But uh, from a small business, don't think this is a, a good option for you. It, it really, really is not. But I wanted to share that because I wanted to be completely transparent um, on this webinar. Okay, so Vector's stance on all of this and everything going on, okay? Re we recommend replacing computers every three to four years. We recommend replacing servers every four to five years. And you say, why? Why, why the difference in the age? And the reason why we do that is because servers are not being touched by humans. Uh, you're not being dropped like laptops, you're not spilling stuff on it, and it's just not abused as much as a Windows operating or a uh, piece of hardware is. So that's why we um, push the servers a little bit further. Now you're probably thinking, oh, well, I want to get eight years out of my computers. The thing is, what you got to go back to is that slide about computers over four years old. Eight years out of computer, yes, a return on your investment is awesome, now, believe me. But the performance of that employee and the reduction of performance that they can do for you is not worth extending that um, computer out uh, or that server out that long. 
all servers and, and, and our stances, all servers 2008 needs to uh, be upgraded by January 14, 2020. All Windows 7 machines need to be upgraded by January 2020. Uh, if a computer, and back to if the computer was purchased uh, June 2017, yes, we do recommend it, um, uh, that you can just upgrade the operating system to Windows 10 Professional. Uh, we only support computers that are Windows 10 Professional, so we do not support Windows 10 Home Edition from a business uh, atmosphere. And based on our MSA with our clients, um, you must maintain vendor support and hardware support. And so that being said, with Microsoft end of life um, Windows 7 Server 2008, technically you're out of, um, you're, you're not abiding by our contract uh, pretty much. And, um, and then the next is, if you don't upgrade Windows 7 Server 2008, vector clients, we do require, and I know a lot of MSPs that are on this call uh, with me, um, my competitors in other markets, we require to sign a waiver of release saying that if you're compromised or hacked, we've told you that you needed to upgrade, but you chose not to, okay? And that's just, that's just covering us as a managed service provider, as your IT provider, saying, pretty much saying to you how important it is that you need to do this. Um, this is not a sales call. This is uh, a serious protecting your company um, webinar here. And then we also do charge additional charges apply for unsupported devices that are not supported by the manufacturer or vendors. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna take questions. Uh, you guys can put in the Q&A section, uh, put any questions that you might have, and I will, uh, Logan will read those all for me and I'll answer those to the best of my knowledge. And if not, I'll have to take it offline with you. So has anybody got any questions at this point? I wanted to make this uh, short and sweet and not boring um, because there is just, uh, you know, the obvious is there, but I wanted to make sure that you guys are uh, informed and clearly informed of what's, uh, what's happening and what's going on. Um, we do have a question. Is there a Windows 10 Pro Enterprise license available? Yeah, so Nick, uh, there is Windows 10 Pro and Windows 10 Enterprise. Uh, no, your company, your, your guys are completely fine on Pro. Um, uh, there is some benefits to Enterprise. Uh, it does cost more, uh, but Nick, I can send you a, a Pro and Enterprise comparison uh, for you as well. But really with, with where you work at, um, Windows 10 Pro is fine. And Nick's got another question, can we download it from your side? I'm not sure what you mean, if you can download uh, Pro or Enterprise uh, from our side. Um, this, uh, this video will be available. Uh, I will post this on YouTube and, uh, and we'll send this out, but this video will be available uh, and the slide and everything will be available uh, shortly. Um, the, uh, but the, the checklist, uh, Nick, if you're talking about referring the checklist between Pro and Enterprise, uh, no, we don't have it on our site, um, um, so I would just have to pull it off the Microsoft site for you. Um, how will the additional charges be applied if one of your clients does not upgrade by the deadline of January 14th? Yeah, so I don't want, uh, I don't want to talk about cost and on this call, but I'll definitely be glad to have that uh, side conversation. Um, we, we charge additional for the machines that are um, not supported. So, but again, I don't want to talk about pricing because of the amount, the amount of people on the call and, and some of the, um, uh, and my, my friends, customers, I guess you would say that's on this call. So uh, I'll, um, you're, I'll, I'll talk to you about that on, on the side and, and what that would look like. And I think, Barbara, you have a question. When I upgrade, uh, will all my old software work? So that is a question, uh, and that's a good question, and something that your IT company or Vector Choice needs to look at for you is when you do upgrade uh, uh, to Windows 10 
the first thing we need to do is check and make sure that your old, your software that you're currently using, if it's um, QuickBooks or Peachtree or uh, any kind of proprietary software that you're using within your company, you want to make sure that that is compatible. Um, there is a case, uh, I've got a client in my DC location that their accounting software, uh, they were running on server 2008 and their accounting software will not work on anything um, other than a 62-bit server. Well, as you know, uh, you might not know, but uh, all servers are 64-bit now um, operating systems, so you can't really do a 32-bit operating system in a server past 2008. So they are, they are sort of in, a, in a, an issue where they might have to upgrade or replace their uh, accounting package. So you definitely want to have someone to look at that before you just up, up, upgrade. Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate everybody getting on. I hope this was useful. Um, the ones that had questions for me. Uh, okay, um, uh, one more. Yeah, um, more. One, of the one of the options you talked about was going to the cloud. Can you please tell me more about that option? Sure. So, you know, the server side uh, of things. Uh, I'll talk about servers and I'll talk about the computers. On the server side, yes, you, besides buying a physical piece of hardware, you can actually move your server to the cloud. Now, it all depends on what that server is doing for you. If that server is running an application that has to be local to uh, a machine or uh, the users uh, within your office, then you, you probably have to stay with a physical server. But if a server is uh, running just your domain controller, your file server, uh, maybe a terminal server, a SQL server, types of, type of, of application servers like that can go to the cloud. So it all is case by case basis. Uh, can you move a server to the cloud or not? And if anybody says, oh, all servers can be to move to the cloud, it's not a true statement because you definitely want to uh, look at how you work as well as um, how you work and, and does that server need to be on site for any reason um, uh, of communication because why? It, the communication between, let's say, a machine um, that, that's maybe in a shop of yours, and and it needs to communicate straight to that server. If it's having to communicate to that server over the VPN connection into a data center, it's going to slow that data process down, and you can have some corruption. So it's all case by case basis, and looking at that. Now you do, besides uh, with a, a cloud uh, hosted servers besides having a one-time cost of buying the equipment and an install of that, you have a monthly service cost. So you look at it as a, um, uh, you know, your CapEx and OpEx, uh, you know, from accounting standpoint, you look at the write-off differently. Uh, besides a depreciating a piece of hardware, you're, you're looking at as a service-based cost at that point. So you're paying a monthly uh, service to host that server. But the nice thing about it is hosted servers, you're only paying for what you actually need meaning storage, CPU, um, RAM, not what you think you're going to need in the future. And that's what the, the, the pro with uh, virtual servers. Now, virtual computers, again, it all depends on the company and what is the best fit uh, and how the company runs. Uh, and, and there's so many variables with that. So covering all that it would be very tricky. But if, you know, some cases where if people, if a client is running off of a terminal server and they use, and all the employees are doing the same operation, you could do a terminal server within clients and not buy a bunch of computers. But then thin clients, um, what's called thin clients, it's really a dumb, a dumb device that really connects to the terminal server in the cloud for you. And so you got an option to do that. Then you've got an option to do VDI, where VDI is just a virtual desktop for that user. VDI is very expensive, and mostly VDI is used in big corporations, not medium and small businesses. <clears throat> okay, question is, got, uh, how long? Got two that came in kind of hand in hand. Okay. Um, one, how easy is it to upgrade to Windows 10? But another person asked, how long does it take to upgrade, and will my staff be interrupted? Is there any downtime? How, um, how easy is upgrade? It is pretty easy. So if you're going to upgrade um, from Windows 7 to Windows 10, 
um, it is a pretty easy path to get upgraded. Now, you can do that just like anything, you want to sort of clear clear your house out uh, when you go into something new, even though it might be the same old computer or older, you know, the computer itself. Um, we do encourage just doing a, a wipe of the Windows 7 and and putting a fresh Windows 10 uh, install on it um, because that just makes the machine, it runs cleaner, it, it, it takes all the old files of Windows 7 out and everything. So the time frame of that, if you do a Windows 7 to Windows 10, relatively quick, not a lot of uh, a downtime. If you do a rebuild, yeah, there is putting everything back in its place, putting the software back on the machine and so forth. Um, you know, upgrades can take uh, 30 minutes uh, on a just a, 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 a upgrade to Windows 7 to Windows 10. You know, we usually say that we're going to interrupt the employee for probably about an hour. Uh, what we do on our side, we actually pre-build the computer, get everything set. So if it's a new computer, we pre-build the computer, get everything set up, get all our software, monitoring software and everything on there, add it to the domain, then switch it out for the user and, and move their data and then start installing. So we try to get everything done, even like their third-party applications, make sure all that stuff is installed before we put it on, on the person's desk. Uh, the more we can do that, the less downtime uh, that it is for the individual uh, person. <clears throat> so I hope to answer both of those questions at the same time. All right, so I think that's all the questions. Uh, I'll give a second if anybody else has any more. I'll be glad, uh, there'll be an email that's com that comes out from me here shortly. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Uh, the email will have my uh, link on it uh, for my calendar and you can book time on my calendar if you are one of a customer of one of my uh, um, co-MSPs that's on this call uh, please reach out to them for any questions on Windows 7 and Server 2008 but if you're my prospect or client uh, please uh, reach out to me and I will get those any qu additional questions answered and sort of more options that you can do and, and talk more in depth of the different options and everything based on your individual company. Well, guys, uh, I appreciate everybody being on the call today. I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day. I'm glad I was able to finish uh, early so uh, you can guys get back to your daily work. Um, this is Will Nobles of Vector Choice Technology Solutions. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.